It's Friday. Do you know where your IT pros are? We don't. It's Patch and Switch. And now, two guys who couldn't make it as helium balloon inflators, yet somehow you trust them with your IT? I don't know what's wrong with you. It's Patch and Switch. <laughs> you know, it, the image sounds- that I got when you said helium balloon inflators. Yeah. Um, I thought of the Ronald McDonald balloon inflator that had the gas pipe coming out of its mouth that you would put the balloon on oh, and yeah. then fill it up back in, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, 70s yeah, and 80s, yeah, yeah. man. That's what I thought of. That's that's <laughs> the image that I had. And and that, I think I've seen one of those just recently at a, at a pawn shop. Or maybe yeah. it's on TV or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> pawn Stars, maybe? Pawn Stars. Yeah. It must have been on Pawn Stars. Nice. But uh, that, that's, that, that's a hard job, man. Can you imagine having to hold yourself down while you're filling balloons all the time? It, having to wear the heavier boots? You don't have to wear heavy, heavier boots. It's a helium. I Not enough he to does. carry. Yeah. He does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah he you're right. It's probably, it's probably... They have extra heavy tanks to make sure the tanks stay down. But it, when you're filling the balloons, you got to hang on. It's probably a safety... <laughs> some sort of Insurance thing. requirements. Yes, yeah. exactly. The that claws of claws. That can work. Um... It's good I, to be back. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused about where I should be trying to focus my efforts on chats. If I should be on the video mm-hmm. or on the post or well, there's nothing in things. the chat room. I don't know that anybody uses the chat room anymore. I think it's on the post. No, it's all on the post. But it's on no, it's on the video. It's not the post. It's on the video. Yeah. So I just hit the video. Okay. And now I'm there. I'm here. So did Someone's, so did Steve. Someone turned on some stuff. Stop it. <laughs> oh, there it is. Stop. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Okay. Frederick's here. Uh, so is Frederick and uh, Dave Fister is here. Nice. That's, that's all I can see. We should we do should you see do, more. We should do a congratulations to Frederick. Uh, okay. He just was celebrating a most recent Azure Stack install. Oh, was he? He was flying back. Oh, excellent. I saw a post. I think it was on Facebook uh, about how he just finished his Azure Stack install. Very He's cool. Back. So very cool. Yep. Craziness. Frederick. Frederick's all about that. Yes. I'm really still trying to figure out how do I get to this thing. All so about I can the see it stack. As it, as about it the stack. Comes in, right? <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't. Uh, <laughs> it's face technology. Is it working? No. Hey, you can here, rest here. assured now that the algorithms for Facebook are changing in 2018. Uh, well, because you know it's that? 2018. No, but you know that? No. It's, I just assumed they were always Zuck, No, Zuck, uh, Zuck made a big announcement um, as part of a New Year's resolution for Facebook and what he's planning on doing for making it so that there's more personal information, more people that you know <sighs> coming up in your feed as a priority as opposed to promoted and news items. Well, that's good. So Great. rather insane that they have uh, to say that. Gareth's here. I see Colleen's here. Oh, nice. I think she's supposed to be doing something. Uh, Sean Logan's oh, here. They have, the new, they have a new thing. It says What's watching this? now. You can actually see the people that are watching. Oh, really? Oh, you what can. That? That's new. Oh, that is new. I like that. That's much easier for you to say hello. Yeah, exactly. Bartolo's here too. Nice. I didn't even see that. That's awesome. There's some people who are actually commenting that aren't watching. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's all good. It's all right. I think we have like three people watching, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we, we beat last week's number by, by two. Yes. Um, we're back. It is. It is the new year. We are back. We're going to try to have a semi-regular schedule, provided yes. your um, uh, you, what, what's, <laughs> our sound guy is continuously turning on his PC audio over there. Yes, and it's screwing me up, man. Like it's 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 breaking the comedic it's timing. Steve. It's Steve. It's, it's, it's Steve. It's our new guy, Steve. <laughs> it's helping us out. Um. Yes, we're going to try to have a more regular schedule. <laughs> um, well, okay, so we need to figure out a remote connectivity option. It is possible. I, I know we've done it before. We uh, did it when you were on vacation. There's this thing called Skype that we could use. Google I Hangouts? Think. No. We no. can do Hangouts if you want. <laughs> no. Uh, it's. I'm assuming the TriCaster can take inputs from other areas, so we can just oh, feed it, a... We can just run it on another Feed a machine. Computer. The problem is that we have to have this... this um, What's this thing called? Translator. Tra- translator. Not translator. The captioning device? The captioning device. Yeah. It's, being u- it's using translator technologies. Uh, but this is now taking up one oh. of our HDMI feeds. Now. But, but I won't. OK. Yeah, you're right. So we have an, an HDMI, HDMI feed here. Yeah. We've got a camera there. But there's an HDMI feed here, That's too. Two. There, there was, there's another oh, there's one. There's one here. There's a, it was, he has one. That's three. Oh, he's got one. So well, there's we one can, more. We can come in on his. There's one more. There's only three working 
working. Right, no, but we can come in. But oh, if it, there's a fourth one that's broken. Ah. Uh, we can maybe fix we've that. We've got one for the camera, replace the, one for this, and one for his cable? machine. I can come in Skype on his machine. But then how does it fit? I guess he could carve it up or something. I don't know. I don't know. He, he's smart. He'd figure and it out. The sole reason why we're even having this discussion is because someone at this table uh, has all of a sudden started to do an awful lot more traveling. <laughs> Yes. We're having coffee as we're walking in the room here. And he's like, oh, yes, I've got to go off to Sydney and then off to London and off to Frankfurt. Bucharest. <laughs> I'm not going to Bucharest. <laughs> it's like, Bucharest all over is the a place. cool city, though. All over the place. Aubrey's here. Good morning. Uh, who else did I see? I saw somebody else coming along and then I wanted to say, oh, Steve Enns. So say hello. Nice. Uh-huh. Uh, Sean Loeb says he can't read the captioning. It makes him laugh too much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I honestly... Don't know if the captioning is helpful. Hey, it's there. It works. Okay. Open captioning. <laughs> says I'm not going to work out. <laughs> I, I honestly told no Japanese. <laughs> Eight, it's been there. Okay, okay. Open captioning. Uh, yeah. Technology. Yeah. It's fun. Well, so what have you been doing? Uh, there's this thing that's going on right now. Hmm. I don't know if you've heard of it. Nope. It's uh, hardware... <laughs> Hardware flaw that's been discovered as a vulnerability in an attack vector. I heard something. It's about a processor, right? Yeah, about a processor. The processor? Processor. Versus the processor. processor. The processor is having an issue. Sorry, the processor. Yeah. So at one point in time, uh, CERN actually had a recommendation on their website to go in and to swap the processor. As I'm the way sorry? they fixed it. <laughs> Literally. That's what they had at one point in their website. CERN says just change the processor. At out. one point, it did. Wow. At one point, it did. Uh, that has since been taken down. Easy. Sure, just um, go ahead and swap the pro. Yeah. So I, uh, there are many more experts than us that can talk about the actual vulnerabilities that so, are out there, but uh, Spectre and so, Meltdown. So wait a minute. How does it work if you have an Intel-based processor And AMD-based processor. Well, I know. Okay, right. So you've got a motherboard <clears throat> for one. Oh, yeah, that's true. It does it. So what do you, is there so, a processor out there that does, that's not a vector? Two names. Arm? Spectre has three, three uh, vectors right. and, uh, or war- warnings, and Meltdown has one. Yes. AMD is affected by meltdown, so yes. is so is Intel. Yep. Uh, Spectre is mostly affected just on the Intel side of things. Gotcha. And uh, it requires that you go in and actually put um, a patch on the operating system, regardless of which operating system it is, to be able to work around this issue. <clears throat> and then it requires you to patch any virtualized guests on top of that operating system uh, to also have the same issue. Mm. So it takes a lot of work. But um, is The Verge actually did a really good article talking about the disclosure timelines and the researchers that found it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I read that last night. It's very interesting how it all went down. <laughs> very like, interesting. Just remove that processor jam in the AMD. I'm sure that the pins will fit. If not, just <laughs> jam it in harder. Yeah, you just have to kind of <laughs> jiggle a little bit and then push down hard. It's a quick wrist snap you have to have to get in there. To do it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if, if it snaps, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. So... Yeah, this is this is one we're going to be dealing with for a while, but uh, it's it's literally been an industry wide uh, thing that's been going on. So, uh, work in engineering has been very interesting to see how the, the process has been going on for a while to mm-hmm. be able to get ready for this, and then how different things were disclosed and the timeline and that sort of stuff. It's just nasty. So, the best part is that everybody is working together across distributions and across operating systems and across manufacturers to make it so that um, it's mitigated across the board yeah but it's to me it's kind of scary because it's um it's the first time they've had this kind of vulnerability this this uh disclosed and um it's what a specter <laughs> of what's to come <laughs> i had to put that in there i don't know how it's going to work it in i had to try to work that out which which mic is he so i can turn him down yeah you want to turn this mic off at now? this point i I'm <clears throat> walk out I don't yeah know. so so i had so so on my personal part, what I've been doing is been uh, contacting different distro vendors and uh, having them publicly make sure that they have their, which they already had, but simply collecting the public information, making it visible, and then also going in and having new images uh, deployed on Azure from Marketplace. So as you know, you know what Marketplace is? Yes, I Just know. Just sure for, for our listeners. Marketplace is your central point. Do, where you, do can you know what Marketplace images. is? Because, you know, yeah. it's, it's just there. Uh, so, yeah, it's it. I mean, picture you go in and deploy a new machine or a thousand machines and you're using an old image that didn't have the fixes on it. You'd have to go in and patch those thousand machines today if the images were not updated. So 
I've been working with folks to be able to get their images updated. Sorry, I had to fix my mic. I know. I figured as much. It was tilted. (laughs) So so we no longer have, the budget has been reduced, in case you haven't noticed yet, that we're down to only a one camera shoot. (laughs) So they can't see, he can't switch away to be able to make it look like you're not doing something. Right. So when you need to scratch your nose or something like that, just be aware. It's just happening. Just turn around when you do it. Yeah. No one will notice. You'll be good. Sure. I'm pretty sure that any time that any of that happened, that our, our, our audio video guy would just switch the camera oh, to yeah. the close-up just to make sure he got it. Just to it. make sure he got it. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's facing this. Everybody's challenged and working with it. And uh, it's uh, crazy. Yeah. Good time. I was Good DRI times. last week for my team. Yeah. D- DRI stands patches. for Designated Responsible, Responsible individual. 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 So, yes. so are, are you like... If if something really bad happens, you I'm the you're on are you on, you're on call. You're I'm, essentially on call. I'm on call. Yeah. Okay. And did you get called? Oh yeah. <laughs> we had several outages thanks to this. Right, because you're responsible for images for testing, right? It's not just images for testing. It's also the operating systems in all environments. You do the build. So <clears> oh, yeah. hosts went down on Azure and took us down. That. Uh, because one, the engineering team didn't set up our availability sets properly, so we saw downtime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then uh, we have an internal system for our um, bare metal systems, and that system started. They sent out a notification at uh, one forty-five and started patching servers at two. Wow! <laughs> so we were like, uh, "Yeah, we can't do what you want to do, customers, because we don't have enough systems." <laughs> Nice. But we pat, uh, I mean, that system patched 6,000 servers in two days. So. Uh, Aubrey is asking where you got your My Other Computer as a Data Center sticker. Uh, you know, I actually got notified. Um, sticker Mule took down the marketplace. Oh, they did? Yeah, you can no longer buy the stickers on Marketplace. Well, that's a bummer. I that think sucks. they were probably hit with uh, cease and desist from name brands um, uh, because there was no control over what stickers you could put up there. Yeah. So you literally have to now resort to knowing people. a face-to-face connection, shaking of hands to be able to get one of these stickers right now. Do you now. have any more? I do have some. Oh, do you? I, I, have, have some. I, I have a good five or six left. <laughs> no. I got about 10. Actually, I, I am gonna, I'm going to redo it again with the new Azure logo. Yeah. Um, cool. and, uh but I like the format of it. People still like it, so I'm still going to do it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I'm also contemplating reviving the, uh, re- the revival over here of the square uh, the, patch. And the switch. large square, the patch large and square switch. one. Yeah. The small circular, cir- circular, circular, circular uh, ones were too small. So uh, we need to find a nice, uh, happy medium for that guy there. The hard, the hard part is the Godfather, Gemudo, mm-hmm. uh, never gave us the original file for that graphic. So we have we have the we have the the done graphic. We don't have the rasterized version of it to be able to make it whatever size you want. Ah, so that makes it rather hard. Well, I wonder if somebody could recreate it. The font is very tricky. Is it? <laughs> is it Courier? <laughs> it's, I think it's Arial New. Arial Comic Sans. Or S- it's Segoe. Comic, I think it's Segoe. Not Comic Sans. It's Comic Sans. Is it? Is it uh, Segoe? Segoe. Segoe. <laughs> I, I don't know Something how like you that. pronounce I, it, that. In the news also, did you see that uh, Huawei, Huawei. They, they lost, they, they they were doing a big deal with uh, AT&T and it got canned. Huawei. 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 Uh, yeah. So they're in the news too. has got to love you. I know. how much work he does with them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gareth says, maybe an ex- it's an excuse for a new logo. No, we don't have the budget. We don't have the budget to do one. So we don't even have the budget to redo the one that we have that is done in a (laughs) standard font with some (laughs) lightning bolts. Yeah, Um, that's all right. It happens. Uh, Vizio MVP says, "What's the going rate in coffee crisp for the sticker?" (laughs) Dollar three eighty. No, no, a dozen coffee. Yeah, how many coffee crisps is a dollar three eighty? Um, I don't know. We'd have to do the Canadian Tire Exchange. There's that's, actually, a, that's a whole. There's actually a, a Forex company that does exchange rates for national currencies. We're going to have yeah. to get them on there to the dollar three eighty currency. Yeah, have to and check. Stickers. Okay. We can do that. Uh, uh, have speak- the audience design your, your sticker. Speaking of which, by the way, I, I still haven't gotten my paycheck for last year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was hoping he wouldn't notice. <laughs> you didn't pay him? No. 
I didn't pay you. The PayPal account was blocked. Oh, still? <laughs> yeah. We're working on it. Okay. Yeah. I have to um, submit. In the mail. I have the to submit in it. the mail. Uh, do you have an invoice? Yes, I do, actually. <laughs> okay. Send, you, send the invoice. I'll see if I can you, get an would you accept? Well, would you accept payment in Moose Coin? Uh, possibly. <laughs> in Moose Coin. But I have an invoice for both me and Steve. <laughs> nice. It's on nice. its way. Kylo and Ren are doing their delivery run right now. <laughs> They're our accountants. <laughs> the accounting firm of Kylo and Ren. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send our lawyers, do we cheat them and how, over to talk to you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's better than our, our PR representative, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the uh, dad joke episode of the Patch and Switch show. You got it. Um, <laughs> and of course, yeah, we've, we've not talked since the holiday. I know we haven't. We, like, literally, it's been busy. It's honestly been very, very busy. I don't know. Have, I, s- have I, I seen you since... Since I took time off. You took time off. I did take time right? off. We, we did brew beer, which we'll talk about we later. We brew beer. Absolutely. Um, was that before Christmas or was that after? It was before Christmas because I was flying to yeah. Alaska it was before. when you guys did that. Oh, that's right. So I don't know that I've actually And I brewed beer again. You. I brewed beer twice what? since we last had a show. Yes. Which we'll talk about. Yeah. Uh, so so Santa bringing any good 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 gadgets and gifts to talk about? Gadgets and gifts. My big gift for me was an Xbox S. Yeah, I got an Xbox One S as well. Yep. I got the uh, Assassin's Creed edition. I did. Oh, I know. I just got the regular. Oh, you got. But the I, I play Assassin's Creed Origins. Yes. I, I have you played it yet? It. No. What? No. Oh my gosh! It's, it's downloading because it's the good. last the last game I played was Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <clears throat> with that was the crew a fun here. Night. That was a fun day. That was a good night. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I've done that. Um, what about you? What was your big uh, deal? I, uh, so, lots of home automation stuff. Uh, so, new light switches, uh, dimmers. I've, I've got questions bulbs. about home automation. We'll do that for random spending, yeah. I think. Um, this awesome hoodie. Yeah, the awesome hoodie is good. I have an awesome ho- hoodie. It says, Engineering Better Beer. And uh, our friends at... Uh, SS Brutech. Yeah, SS Brutech. We are open for sponsors, SS Brutech. <laughs> I, I, I'm just wearing it, not uh, hoping that they'll send yeah. stuff, uh, which is our um, kind of one of the brands that, w- that we like to, to go to. We just bought the new Conical, which we'll talk about in beer time. At any rate, yes, some some cool uh, hoodie swag uh, from from the misses. Um, it's just it it was kind of a gadgety cool Christmas for me, just with the home automation and electrical stuff, and then um, I'm, I'm buying a new smoker. You're buying a new smoker, uh-huh. but I was looking at buying additional beer stuff. But yeah, like we've got a lot of beer stuff. I, I need a new smoker. <laughs> I can't picture you without your Weber. Like you're you're a diehard Weber guy. I'll use that too. Huh? I'll use that too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what are you gonna do for a smoker? Oh, we'll talk about it later. Talk about it later. Yeah. All this stuff you must stay tuned for the rest of the episode of Patch and Switch. Yeah. Um, how about technology wise? Besides home automation. Besides the home automation. And Do you have any new laptops appear in the house? Any new wireless no, no, gear? No new laptops. Uh, uh, no new devices apart from just the, the Z-Wave and the Z- and Santa the Santa mm-hmm. bought a gaming video card for my son. Oh, yeah? And he bought him a gaming um, gaming monitor. I, did, I had no idea there were such things. There's a gaming uh, monitor? There's a gaming monitor. I did not know Does that. Does it just have low response time? Is it's that... one, less than one millisecond response rate. Oh, wow. Screen. And it's really nice looking, too. Yeah? Is uh, that for my daughter, PUBG? Yeah, my daughter got a... She got PUBGs, yeah, as well. Um, daughter got a Surface... Surface? A Surface Pro. Oh, nice. My other daughter got an iPhone X. Wow. It's all about... Wow. It's all about... That's, um... It's all about it's all about payment plans. It's all. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that's. I mean, that's not a. That's uh, not a. That's not a, a small investment there in the phone. Yeah. Uh, so how's how was the the I mean the video card installation and the video card installation went well. Configuration. The issue became, uh, believe it or not, wired networking. Good old fashioned wired networking to get it so that the desktop would work. What was. Uh, it, All my jacks have... in my house are um, RJ11s for telephone. Hey, you just because the guy out. that owned the house before me was a guy that worked for the telephone company. And so when he had the house built, he had RJ11 jacks put in all over the place. Luckily, he did get RJ, uh, he did get uh, Cat6 yeah. strung. 
And so it's just a matter of punching out and putting in. Yeah, and you just put in good. the new keystones, that right? Works. Yeah, it yeah. Does, definitely works. Yeah, yeah. The issue is trying to find um, where you left your crimper tool and where you left your little punch down block to be able to switch it out. Oh, yeah. To the punch down tool? Couldn't find it anywhere. So uh, I ended up resorting to the good old fashioned, let's just string a really 50, long 50 foot ethernet cable from one room around the door, over the door frame, laundry room, back down, in through the side, and then into where he is. If only he had a friend who lived less than a mile away, <laughs> or, but, know, who has all of these tools and know where they are. Yeah. Just, I couldn't put out the, the IT pro Batman light. Of the I don't know somewhere. that it's that. I think it's just simply, hey, can't find my crimp tool. Any? I, do you have that in a punch down? And I'd be like, well, absolutely. The it's last right crimp here. tool that I, I loaned you, I never got back. So it's still sitting it's, on my kegerator. Um, what about CD players? CD player? Well, yeah. USB CD DVD, players. DVD, DVD, DVD I, my, my resolution for 2018 is to clean out my office. And possibly find and that. And possibly find your DVD, yeah, your okay. USB connected one, DVD. You, know. you bought a new one? Yeah. Oh, nice. So you can just have that. Merry nice. Christmas. Thank you. I'm glad I got a gift from Jay Shock. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so, so you've got that. You got that all, and and he's good and up and all running. in. It's good. So you Except, haven't. Are you are you now in in the process of looking at switching out all the connections in in the house or some? I just or? need to finish it. Right. Yeah. I was doing on demand, and on demand just doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it's not agile enough. You have to finish the project. <laughs> I actually have to go in and finish the project. So. Oh, I did put, get. I a missed new, my milestones. So, so you need to put it in the next sprint. <laughs> yes, in the next sprint. I did get another access point. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you got two APs now. I got two APs, but it's still in the box. Let's see, mine's up. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, I need to. Have I, you been updating the firmware on those things? Uh, yeah, uh, it's. I've not been doing it as regularly as I should, but yeah. I have been. You know, there's an auto update for the firmware. I do, but there is a SLA in the house, and I do have to go through change control and approval. Yes. Yeah, it has to be posted on the fridge at least 24 hours in advance. Exactly, <laughs> notification <laughs> that the the network will be down. Yes, whatever. Yes. Yeah, that's um, his window. Of, his window is very small to be able to get it back up and working again. Um, yeah, it's typically very late at night. Yeah. It's just like any other IT. It's really the the, the house is an IT organization now because <laughs> with the various uh, activities that are going on and 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 you have a comptroller yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, an auditor. Yeah, <laughs> I've got the entire I've got the entire system. Yeah, absolutely. And the users. And I have users. The, the end users, users. The end users are really critical about any downtime <laughs> in my in, in, in my. Uh, w w yep. in my I house. can't post yeah. a Snapchat, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, the, it's more the Xbox stuff, so, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Funnily enough, um, the temporary wiring job for my son to get his gaming rig working uh, had to be removed because he was changing rooms. He changed rooms requiring the the wiring job because I had uh, my mother and father visiting me from out east for a week so he had to give up his big room he would then went back down to his big room and uh there is no wiring cable that goes that long and he changed where his stuff was uh and so he actually came out yesterday and we're talking we're having dinner and stuff like that and then he made an offhanded comment about how he can't play anything and can't use his computer because there's no internet back there um, and i literally just without even missing a beat i'm eating my my uh, my taco it was taco thursdays um and uh he said um, two days late doesn't work it's taco thursdays and he said, it doesn't work. Um, it takes longer to get and I'm like, to without even it's dropping a beat, red. like, did you file a ticket? I haven't received a ticket yet. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly <laughs> spat her <laughs> ginger <laughs> ale across the table laughing <laughs> <laughs> when I said that. You got, you, you, uh, did you call so the help desk? Without even dropping a beat. Did you submit a service request? Yeah. So which ICMQ is that? <laughs> <laughs> so he... Uh, he then, within within a matter of minutes, I get a text message of a uh, of a um, of a official service request. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, and, and I, did you tell me SLA? Do you know what the fix days? was? If the fix was the SLA was really easy because I just happened to have inventory on me. Uh, I had a wireless dongle. <laughs> so oh, is it just I connected? Just, it. I just walked over little teeny tiny thing this big, stick it in there, reboot the machine, bring it back up. Oh look, it's working. Thank you. That'll be two hundred fifty dollars, please. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Well, my my service requests are typically when the laptop shows up on the the kitchen counter. Yeah, and it's just it's just there. When you, when you notice displaced, 
well, yeah. infrastructure. When, when one of the laptops that's normally up in the room comes down and it's sitting on the kitchen counter, I'm like, that's so do I like have a, to do something with this? It's just like it was with work too, right? Back I know. Yes, days, exactly. The computer show up with no explanation yeah. Yeah, exactly. as to what's wrong. The, the, Maybe a post-it note if you're lucky. You, you need to make a printout form. Yes. Put it by the kitchen Well, table. it just says it doesn't work. <laughs> That's it, that, it doesn't work was the request. So this really is, I'm, I'm reliving the, uh, the first five years of my career. So I, I can. <laughs> of like level one or level zero help this, desk work where just stuff just appears. So I had to call a certain, uh, I, I had to, this is the third day troubleshooting something in my house. Speaking of tech support stuff, but it wasn't me. I was acting as the troubleshooting. Actually, my wife was acting as the troubleshooting agent relay proxy to the actual interface of what was going on with a certain vendor that does a lot of online shopping. Okay. Uh, and it was because we got some of the those devices that you can do voice control with. And my son wanted to get his working the, that he got. Um, oh, and did he get one too? He got one too, because he wants to be able to basically say, turn fan on, woo, fan goes on, that sort of stuff. And- uh, Do you have outlets for that? Yeah, I do. Or did you just get the little plug-in ones? I got the plug-in one. <laughs> <It works laughs> nice. Great. Uh, so the uh, he he tries to activate the account. The account won't activate because for some reason there is another. Um, it's blocked. Just simply can't do it. So he goes in. Doesn't work. They're on the phone call. Can't get it to work. Can't figure out why. They literally said at one point in time, just I think it's going to work now. But just keep on trying, and then maybe it'll work in in a, about an hour or so when the systems catch up. And my wife is like calling BS on this, saying, no way, that's not going to happen. I know how this works. Uh, and eventually they said, okay, well, you don't have to escalate this. I'm going to have to call you back. So then we never got a call back. I got an email yesterday, like 4 o'clock, 24 hours later, saying, uh, you tried all the following things, which was a stock copy and paste. And we hope this resolved your issue. Thank you very much, yes or no. I clicked on no, filled out the survey. It didn't work. And then I'm like, you know what? After I got the wireless dongle fixed, I'm just going to, I'm going to, Try this. So I go online. I do a chat interface. I'm starting chatting with the person. I one sentence description of what it was, and all of a sudden it says, "Your case is being redirected." <laughs> it goes up to the next level. Talk to the other person, trying to work it out. But basically, what had happened for some reason, the old account had the phone number. It used to have the phone number, but the phone number is no longer with that account anymore. I created a brand new account and tried to make it work, which is going great. And then add the phone number, and it was blocked because the phone number has been used. And three levels of escalation to get through and they determined that the phone number for some reason was with this account and had a name of Dave. <laughs> Dave's not here. And Dave had the same address as what I have as my address and the phone number that we've had for five years is the same phone number and it's Dave. Dave's not here, man. I know. So it's like <laughs> some kind of garbage metadata somehow, I guess, through an automated process. Or somebody hacks or your account. But, but it's like Just my, so you know, Dave in the my, chat room says it wasn't me. It wasn't him. So the, <laughs> the phone number, which has been with us for five years, and I know that you know mobile companies recycle phone numbers, but somehow that phone number was put in and associated with an account that created an account on that provider uh, on August 26, 2016 and had used our address, but had never done any purchasing. They'd never done anything. So it was like a stale zombie account. And they couldn't clear it out. They couldn't do it. It finally went to another level of escalation. And then they had to call me uh, to be able to talk to me and then confirm what it was. And then that person had the authority to go in and yank that phone number out. Then I could associate with the proper did, account. Did you talk to Did you talk to the big guy, Jeff? <sighs> I don't know what it was. Was that the but it's, escalation it's level like, you had to talk to Jeff? It is, it is uh, very, as everybody, uh, always a painful situation having to work in the industry and having to work with tech support and go through stuff and just realize how everybody has different levels of, of, sure. of filtering that you have to go through. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, uh, as an industry, we have to do better. Well, somehow. One, one of the things that I did in random spending over the holiday break is that, uh, and, and you assisted, and I, I very much appreciate your assistance. <laughs> my knees, uh, my knees. Oh, uh, I installed. Uh, I, I wall mounted a 65 inch uh, 4K TV that uh, I, I random spent on, uh, and uh, so there is a Smurf tube that runs from up above my fireplace it's, and, and down and under the this, crawl space. The Smurf tube is blue. It is. It is a blue Smurf tube. <laughs> It is. That's why I call it a Smurf tube. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so it runs from up by the fireplace, and then and they had already run uh, normal cable television jack there, which, by the way, when you plug a normal cable TV jack into a 4K TV, you don't get 4K. Yes. Yeah. Just, just saying. Shocker. Uh, so what we had to do is we had to run a couple of, of high-quality HDMI cables from down through the Smurf tube over back through where it comes up out of the wall. Mm-hmm. You helped by because I can't fit in my crawl space. No, it's, there's there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, yes. can fit inside that crawl space. So I I, I put in a a, a, a troubleshooting request. <laughs> he filed a ticket to get a yes. small friend of his. Yes, exactly. To come and crawl around. I, I did put the requirement house. under. Uh, uh, it uh, <laughs> must be this tall. The fact that his troubleshooting ticket system has that metadata field is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. small guy. I, I, it's, it's 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 in the marketplace. Yeah. You can just download it, use it. <laughs> um, it's so a different skew size. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, exactly. The t-shirt size was yeah. extra small. Yeah, exactly. That's the the. Uh, anyway, uh, so you came by and you helped me run a couple of cables. It, 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 it took you longer to navigate your way through the crawl oh, yeah. space than it did to run the cables. And I do have to say, you need to pay your guy that does pest control a bit more to come and pick up all the dead he's, carcasses. He's, he comes. It's just a recent He doesn't thing. crawl around. Uh, yeah. No, he does. Uh, mummified mice. Yeah, we have mummified mice. It's okay. <laughs> Little t- yeah. Zombie mice that have Zombie been mummified. Mice, the field mice. Um, so we did that, and we ran all the cables. And connected everything. And one of the things that I did is identified the cables and I've color tagged them with um, electrical tape. So there's the green one and then there's the red one so that, you know, if we ever disconnect, because when they're run through the, the wall. Always choose the red one. Yeah, no, you always use the red one. Um, so I connected it up initially, um, having unplugged my cable box and, and everything to move everything around and get it reconfigured. Plugged it back in. And it was booting up and it was fine. And then all of a sudden it goes black. I'm like, well, that's weird. So I switch out the cable thinking I have a bad HDMI cable, in which case that would suck, but it would still be easy to run it. And I wouldn't even need you in the crawl space because I just attach it to the other cable and pull it through the wall. Uh, And uh, check the other cable and it does the same thing. I'm like, well, that's weird. So I connect the Xbox and a DVD player to both of them and they work fine. I'm like, wow, there must be something weird. It must be stuck. Maybe it's not auto-negotiating the proper resolution, something like that. So I get on the horn with the the cable provider. And the guy says, so on your TV, tune it to this input. What does it say? I says, it says no signal. No, that's the wrong input. And I said, no, it is the right input. I know this because I I know the TV. I'm, I, no, it says here, whenever you see that error message, you are choosing the wrong input on your TV. I said, well, it says here that it's connected to HDMI 1 and it's plugged into HDMI 1. Nope. The script says it's in. And I, okay. Wondering if I could get somebody else on the phone here. Yeah. Anybody else to help me out here? Oh, hang on. Well, let me run some troubleshooting. So they rebooted my uh, cable, cable box, box several times. Still never came up. He's like, well, it says the system's telling me it's sending a signal. Uh, well, it may be sending a signal, but I, I don't, I'm not getting the signal. And if I take the same cable, plugged into the same input, and put it into another device, it projects just fine. This is a, uh, this is on, I believe it was New Year's. No, it was Christmas Eve. No, day before Christmas Eve uh, when we're doing this. And One I of the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, and I don't know that they are going to be open on Christmas Eve or not. It's 7 p.m. The local office closes at 8, and at this point I'm like, tell you what. I'm just going to take this to the office and they'll fix it. Hang off the phone, grab everything, run into the car, go down to the office. And this is where, and I normally am very critical of this cable company. I have to give them all the credit in the world. Oh, nice. I walk into the place. Luckily, they're not very busy. So there's only a couple people ahead of me in the queue. Guy comes up. I'm like, so this is really weird. But I swapped TVs and something happened with this. And he said, wow, that is weird. But I've heard of this happening one other instance. So we're just going to swap out the box. Boom. Now, I'm concerned because I have recordings, and I know the recordings go into the cloud, but the last time I had to swap out a box, they couldn't p- map it correctly, so my recordings weren't playing. And he's like, no, no, it's all taken care of. And I'm like, so am I going to have to get on the phone when I get home and get these guys to sync it to the account, which is what happened last time? He's like, no, it's all good. And I'm like, I'm holding you to that. Mm-hmm. I get home, walk in the door, plug it into the power cable, slap it on, boom, TV lights right up. 
everything's configured. It's it just it literally boots. Everything's all good. So kudos to them on that one. But an oddity that were your recordings there? The, the recordings are there. It, I've only had a couple of little glitchy times, but it's when they're on demand and it just says, oh, I can't play this recording, but we found the on demand version and we'll let you fast forward through it. I'm like, that's all I care about. But really weird, right? That an HDMI output would just glitch out like that. It, Die. it was one of those things that I was panicked because I'm like, panicked. yeah. And, and then I took the box upstairs. I took the, before I took it to the cable uh, store, I took the broken one upstairs and validated. And I'm like, oh, yep. See, it doesn't work up here on this TV. So, yeah. You troubleshot the physical. I did. A lot of people forget layer that. Layer one. I layer one. forget layer yeah. one. Yeah, they forget yeah. layer one. I, I guess I was just frustrated with the guy says, well, it says here if you They're get that out. error message, it's this. And I'm like, dude, I'm not. They gonna... automatically go to layer two or layer zero, which is the human. Yes. <laughs> it, was not a peb, it was not a PEBCAC issue. Yeah. Or PEBR, like problem between, problem between remote and TV. Peb, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so I random spent a lot. <laughs> Cable. Fun. TV installation. Fun. I didn't. But it's awesome now. You didn't random spend that much. Uh, Gareth says, I don't understand the TV above the fireplace. Doesn't it give a crick in the neck? No, because I have a mount. Uh, so the mount that I have does tilt down, and it actually is a great angle. And the reason why we've decided to do it is I was running out of space in this particular room downstairs. When we purchased, when, when we bought the house and initially moved in, the thought was we were going to use the upstairs room for all the TV and not be downstairs as much as we are. Well, when that's fine when your kids are younger, but when teenage dumb happens yeah. and the house space. is full of teenagers. I've got two rooms like that now. Yeah. Because I've, I've got my son and then my twin girls and they yeah. just need their each individual space. So I had to, we've decided we're going to extend the living space to the downstairs area. I needed that additional seating space because I did buy a new couch. Yeah. And... But it's 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 not it's it you don't get the, it's up high but because of the the tilt angle it's actually just perfect so yeah yeah anyway uh do you want to talk about beer I love to talk about beer so last time we spoke we had just gotten the new conical fermenter you had done your first brew on it and tried to dump the 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 trub and got the the liquid back up into the system. Yep. And then uh, that leads us to when we brewed next time, which was it was time to move it out of that into uh, secondary, well, to finish, right, into kegs yep. to serve. And so you once again, we're going to dump dump the, the trub at the bottom, make it nice and clean, so less filtration needed. And what happened? It worked. <laughs> But what did you what did you do again? <laughs> I forgot to take the thing out again. <laughs> <laughs> However, when you're using a conical fermenter with what is it a one inch tube now yes. that we're using, yep. it can fill up a, a five gallon keg very like fast. That. Oh, it's beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Uh, so yeah, so the that was the honey brown ale. Yes, uh, and there still was a little tiny bit of trouble at the bottom. Got rid of it, and yeah, the, to to. Now simply have to raise the the conical up, open up the valve with a one with a with a one inch uh, diameter diameter exhaust port with a yep. tube attached to it yep. to fill up a five gallon conical. You literally are filling up that conical in like or fill up the 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 keg, the keg. in like not even twenty seconds. Yeah, it's full. It's it's, and it's back so it fantastic. It's, it's awesome. It is so fantastic. And so uh, same thing for the second one. It's all good. Uh, then I did another batch just recently yes. uh, in there. I'm doing a rye IPA. The Ripa. And this time I did remember to remove it the very first time. Oh, did you do the trub jump? I did a trub jump already. Yeah. I took a specific gravity reading. It's all fine. It was done fermenting. It's like, okay, let's get this done. I bring out the bucket. It's a one-gallon bucket that I use on the end of the end of this, the spigot. And then open it up, and it doesn't move. It's like dead. It doesn't work at all. I'm like, what's going on? And so, of course, what do I do? I close it. I look over. I make sure that the thing is not inside the, the, the water. Not it's not in the water. water. I'm like, ah, that's weird. And I open it up again, but this time it go f full force all the way at the very beginning. And then the sludge starts to come out. And then eventually enough comes out of the way. <laughs> big, uh, big How deluge. many gallons of, of, of beer are there? So basically it was about, uh, I want to say, a third of a gallon of, of actual yeast. Wow. Uh, and trub. And then two thirds of um, <laughs> of other stuff that came out very quickly. Yeah. And then you turn it off. So you just got to watch it. You just yeah. have to watch it when it comes yeah. out first. 
So now it's in the secondary and it's happy. I need to figure out what to dry hop it with. Probably Cascade. I told you. We have Cascade. Cascade a way to do it. And then uh, we'll have um, the clogger, honey brown, uh, rye IPA, and a cider on tap. Nice. We're ready to go. Nice. And uh, I just got a reminder that I, I shared with you guys a little while ago that the National Homebrewers Competition is going to be taking place yes. on January 23rd for it is? the initial submissions. And you are going to I'm submit. I'm going to submit all three. You're going to submit all three. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So 14 bucks each. What the heck? I don't have time to brew anything to get it done by January. Well, you don't. You just have to put the intent in that you're going to do it. Oh. And then you have to ship it. And then shipping it, you have to. Yeah, I think you have to have your submissions in and shipped by February fourth. My challenge, my challenge is living within the BJCP style guidelines because we tend to do things that are we color well, outside um, the lines. Yeah, we do color outside the lines a lot. Yeah. What uh, lines? And then we've got <laughs> then we've got competition coming. Yep. April. Yep. Which means it's time to brew. Are you are you gonna make a beer? Probably not. Beer? No. Oh, all right. He's like, eh. I just go to a place and they serve it to me. I just show up and go with an empty mug and go here, and they fill it up and there's yeah. beer and you're good. Scott's good about that. <laughs> it's all good. All and, right. and you know, and then when I ask him for Bud Light, I get a nice glass of water. A nice glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> nice glass of water. Nice. How about a nice glass of water? <laughs> uh, anything else? Beer spending. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying trying to get the order in for the the plate chiller. Yes. Yes. I had a little bit of an issue, but I believe it's resolved now. Yes. The, at one point in time, our homemade chilling device, which is very important, part of the beer process, taking the boiling 212 Fahrenheit down to 70 Fahrenheit or 60 Fahrenheit as fast as you can. That's too much math. Um, anyway, uh, we were using a copper tube on the inside of a coil that worked great but it was very difficult to clean. So at one point during the first brew, I'm like, I can't believe this stuff is still in there after we've cleaned it all. Yeah. And um, yeah, so. So did something happen over time that just, because, or was it just that we weren't using it, so it just crudded up? We weren't using it, it was crudded up, and yeah. we needed to go harder and longer with chemicals to be able to yeah. clean it, which we weren't able to do. So just time, yeah. to, move, time to move on the new technology. So it's, it's, it's dead? Jim. Done, it's already been recycled. Has it? <laughs> wow. Already been recycled. That much copper, that's probably a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dollar three eighty at least. Yep. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I could have paid you with a conical uh, with a counterflow chiller. Counterflow chiller. Here you go. He's not brewing beer anymore though. He's mm. just drinking it. Taking a break. Taking a break. Taking eh, that's a all break. right. All right. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm so gonna I, I'm going to random spend on some stuff oh, coming up. What are you gonna random spend? I'm on? gonna random spend on a new outdoor security cam floodlight system. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want to bring this up I because I didn't. Up. Sorry, I, had to. I didn't. I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't know how fragile, fragile, <laughs> fragile you would be. That's French, right? Yeah, you got it. Um, it's Italian. It's expensive. So you need some lights to project. It's a prestigious award. It's a, it's a major award. So you need some lights that project out into the driveway. The project on the driveway. Well, yeah. So you do. You did have a system, and it's uh, and and because you, you showed me like yeah. Bobcat walking across yeah, yeah, the Bob driveway. Yeah, Bobcat walking. Yeah. So. So uh, what happened? <laughs> if you own a Jeep, you know that generally speaking, you don't bother locking said Jeep okay. because it is prone for break-ins because it has no hard top on it. It's got a soft top or it has no top on it in the summer months. So I don't keep stuff inside my Jeep normally. It's just in my driveway. It's all good. And I don't lock it. Right. Uh, but there happened to be a Prowler group that had gone through my neighborhood and were doing quick checks of doors. And they did a quick check of my wife's door, and it was locked. And they did a quick check of my Jeep. It was open. In less than a minute, the front guy had gone into the front seat. Another guy joined him, and then he went through the back seat. And another guy joined him and went through the trunk. And they had cleaned out the entire Jeep in less than 30 seconds and moved on to the next place. So what was in the Jeep? The only thing that was in the Jeep was my discovery pass, which allowed me to get inside of uh, national parks and hiking trails. So what, after they rob everybody clean, they're just going to go hiking? They need to go back to nature, and they have to go for a calming walk. <laughs> so they, they now have a pass they can do that with. You know, uh, if, you put your dry, if you put the uh, if you license, put your license plate, plate on number it, on it, they, they can't it. use it. But yeah. I, I had just gotten it and had not had the license plate put ah. on it. Okay. Not that they would have checked anyway. 
Uh, and uh, I just happened to have my air compressor bag uh, in there from off roading So it had my high flow air compressor, my decompression, my de inflator tool, and my um, inflator. Is this the air compressor valve. we used when we were like building the vents and stuff? Is that no, no, it's not, not 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 a not a nailer air compressor. Oh, okay. I have one just for the Jeep. Oh, just to for be the able Jeep. to fuel up the tires. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, so those are gone. I'm not worried about it. But the best part was that my wife discovered it happened uh, because my door was open. <laughs> and and uh, so I went on to the security camera video and saw exactly at 3.35 a.m. these three gentlemen came through and did this and were gone by 3.36 a.m. And so I decided with my video editing prowess to slice and dice that together. I saw that. Uh, and then I went in and did a zoomed area enlargement a la CSI of the, uh, the two guys at different points. Enhance. <laughs> yes, enhance. Enhance. Uh, enhance. And, enhance. Um, and decided to post it just to say, hey, this is what's happening. Yeah. Just because as soon as you talk about it, people are going to say, oh, it's just some teenagers are doing this and they're just, you know, whatever. It's like, no, these guys actually were pros for what yeah. they were doing. Uh, and they'd swept through the, the environment. Of course, I reported to the sheriff's department who came out and, and uh, I did an online report first, but they won't let you do an online report if you have evidence. So that he wanted to come out and see the evidence of the actual thing. Um, he's like, can I get a copy of that? Can you burn me a copy of that? I'm like, if I only had an external DVD drive that burns, <laughs> exactly. I don't know where it is right now. That's a good callback. <laughs> but I do have a USB stick. So I went upstairs and grabbed one of the kids, like grade school USB sticks that, you know, it's part of the school supplies you like have to four have. Meg. It's like a four meg or a two meg from some conference I went to, maybe, maybe tech ed or something like that. And I went in, formatted it, and I copied the file over so he had it. And then I also, like, if you want to, he's like, do you have any identifiable markers or serial numbers of those things? I'm like, no, I don't actually have it. But you know what? I'll, I'll give you the links of all the stuff that I bought so you can at least see what it is. Uh, I put that on there too and gave it to him. Um, and uh, I, I posted it on social media. I put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, uh, and other folks. So the and best part was you posted it on Facebook. I watched the video, and <laughs> your, your, your post on Facebook had a question. So I respond to you via text message, and your response back to me is, what? As if I, you had no idea what I was talking about. And I'm like, dude, you just posted to social media. And he's like, wow, that was fast. The social thing really works. <laughs> and then the so. funny thing is in the chat inside the video here, people are posting links to hard tops. Yeah. You have your hard top installed. Oh, yeah, totally. But you still leave the Jeep unlocked. Of course. Because just have it. So, um, yeah, that okay. was fun. It was it, it, so... Regardless, long story. To so, get to what this was point. what's the issue with the, the random spend? The, is the fact that the wide angle and lens of the camera that I have is an older generation of the newer ones, which are higher definition cameras, and are wider angle lenses and better low light, low night vision. Visibility. So you'll be able to see more of the driveway, more see detail. more of the driveway, and also have a uh, you can, in the video you can actually see the guy come around the corner to come towards the cars and the light come on. Yeah, and, and, and then he you stops see and you cold, see him right? you see him look at something and then you see him look up at the camera directly. He doesn't know it's a camera because it's a light. Right. The one that I have, you can't tell it's a camera. Oh, gotcha. The spotlight one with the camera on it actually looks like a camera and two spotlights. Right. Uh, for what's there. Are you looking at like the ring or something? Is that what you're looking at or what Currently, you yeah, at? the 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 ring secure cam double floodlight for yeah. 189, I think it is, right. 169. What looking about, pretty good. What yeah. about the one with the tracking system? The tracking system a, can work. Put a little. Uh... Yeah. So the the, <laughs> the 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 again the the good thing is that the existing system, which is a, a Nitamo or a Natamo, I have to put the emphasis on there. Mm -hmm. uh, it does the ability to go in and, and do zones and define zones. Huawei. Huawei. <laughs> And it allows you to say, alert me when a human goes inside this zone. Alert me when a animal goes across this zone or a car goes across this zone. So you can do that with, with them, but you can't do it to the same level of granularity with the ring that I Right, have. yeah. It's just kind of a... There's motion. Uh, yeah. I can do something. But the ring does come with an alarm. So It does. I could press the button and have the alarm go off if I wanted to. Uh, but I'm, I, what's, my wife is like, we have two dogs. Where were they? <laughs> and I'm like, listen to the video though. Riley, there's no noise. There's not a single noise out there. Like no. you hear the rain falling. These That's right. That's what you didn't hear. have a single word that they said. No, it's just a. And then they closed the door very quietly. One guy went back to close the door. <laughs> yeah, that was what was really. <laughs> the funny. other guy didn't, and that's why we even knew it happened in the first place. Yeah. Uh, Goes back and clicks in the door. That's a bummer. Yep. That's, that's a life. bummer. So new if this then. Rule, I guess, will be when a human during these hours crosses this zone, send an email 
turn on alarm and right. uh, initiate electric fence protocol number one. The Magnavolt? The Magnavolt. Yeah. From Robocop. Let's see what it is. Gareth, Gareth actually just mentioned that, the, yeah. the Magnavolt. Yeah, we, we talked about that on the, uh, on the WhatsApp chat group. Yep. <laughs> that, that kind of went, it went downhill fairly quickly, nice. as it usually does. So... Uh, so, but the, the 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 moral of the story is a lock your jeep. Lock your jeep. B is um, no matter what happens, share that stuff because yeah. If, so if, there was if, a lot of people that are just like show, they're show, not going to do anything. Was the no, common thread? No, on I'm the not face. expecting to find anything. I'm not expecting the police to go off and do fingerprint analysis and DNA collection from my jeep or anything else like that. They're busy with other things. Oh, they didn't. They didn't even so, do that when somebody stole my car. Yeah, I know. So it's like they got other stuff to do, but at least. People know, hey, this kind of stuff's going on, and now they have other links to other events that happened that evening that they didn't have links to before, and they now have proof of the methodology that they were using to go through and do this sweep. Yeah. So it's always good to do it. But then you have, obviously, the social media commenters saying, ah, what do <laughs> you pay these police for? Why are they not there? They should be patrolling more. <laughs> Our buddy Pierre CSI, Redmond Ridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my daughter will take it over. That's what she wants to go to college for. Right so, on. Yeah. Right on. Forensic science. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah. Uh, this, that this, just sucks, though. Yeah. I mean, happens. I know it. Is, I, I know it's one of those things you just think, eh. But uh, I guess it's because it it didn't. The, 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 you weren't able to tell there was a camera. It wasn't enough of a deterrent to stop them when yeah. he looked up and saw. Because, yeah. like, do you think had he looked up and seen it was a camera, he would have? They would. He would have probably stolen. If <laughs> so, I'm going to mount it high enough that they can't reach it. That's the crazy part. But if you even just had like a red blinking light, <laughs> just a red LED light. That's not a Christmas light. You, you need you need to have a recording when when that if this then that plays. Yeah, it, it's it's like. Stop. You have entered it. Please leave within 30 seconds. You have entered a restricted zone. Uh, you will be terminated in 30 seconds if yeah. you do not leave the zone. <laughs> and, then, and then have a have a pen LED laser that is on side of your remote control. <laughs> <laughs> that would start going back and forth. <laughs> That's, what it looks like. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh. So, uh, what other home automation questions? We have a couple more minutes. Left yeah, I know. Before we I know. To, is there other home automation stuff? So, this or? is a serious question. Multi-family, or uh, multi-family, multi-teenager household. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, I'm not talking about like, it's a, it's like you, you and your significant other in the house and you want to do some automation because you can do it. Literally, I have three semi-technical technical savvy kids that are there. Uh, my wife wants it to be completely transparent for whatever she does. But... Um, how do you handle if they want to have automation as well with regards to something like the Echoes or the Google Home or the Invoke from uh, Microsoft? How do you handle different areas of where voice is able to be picked up and what it can integrate with? So here's my scenario. I got one in the central area of the house. I've got one in another area of the house that, that people happen to habitate. Those are both linked to my account and my services and my right. home automation. Right. 16-year-old son wants to have similar technology in his room to control his fan and to control his lights and to, you know, play music uh, as required through voice uh, on various different services. If he attaches to my account and my infrastructure, he gets my connections on Spotify and my playlists, which are significantly different than a 16-year-old son. Uh, and you can only have one account registered with Spotify and on, with Sonos on integration Sonos, on to be Sonos, able to do it. Right. So do you carve off and make your own other pool of identity for that one individual in the household that's more tech savvy to have their own level of automation? Can you share devices between those two different identity realms uh, to have it work? And then how does this now multiply when I've got twin number one and twin number two seeing how cool it is for their brother to do this stuff to also want to do it on theirs too. I know this is like totally first world problems here, but no, like it's, it's something I don't think is addressed right now. No, I think, I think you're hundred percent right. I think what's the optimal configuration. for this? Well, I think, I think that's one of the, that's kind of one of the, the downsides to the way that things are currently done. Right. Because I have the integration as well. Um, and the, 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 the challenge that we have is it's very similar is that mom's playlist that she has, she doesn't use, in our case, it's fine because I don't use 
I use Spotify. I don't use Pandora. She uses Pandora. Oh, okay. Use Spotify. So it's not that big of an issue for us. Um, <laughs> however, it. Um, I Alexa, can see that play being, Golden Oldies, oldies on Pandora. Just started right. everybody's. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but you're no, you're 100 percent right because it was one of the challenges that I found is how do you give them control through the so, Wink app. So what, one thing you can do for Spotify is you can me as the central account can go in and choose to favorite 16 year old son's playlists, and then they show up in my playlist option, and okay. then you can say, All right. "Well, that's not that." I mean, that's not the worst solution. It kind of works, but then it influences the music that gets suggested to me. <laughs> I don't sure. want to have gangster rap come up in my jazz feed, you, sure? you know, come on. Okay. <laughs> my easy listening 70s music. I don't, Sit I don't want to have any of that. Oh, what's really infuriating when all of a sudden like Run DMC starts going into my, um, what's my, wrong uh, with Run DMC? <laughs> That's probably my, it doesn't fit there. with Sorry. my, it Christmas music. it doesn't fit with my air supply. <laughs> it doesn't fit with your Eastern Canada, no. uh, folk music. <laughs> nothing wrong, nothing wrong with great big C. Hey, do you have access uh, to, to, to stream from the room where the band is? Um, no. Okay. I'm, I've been forced updates, so I, I, don't, I don't have access. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the results to see if anyone's come up with any suggestions. No one has. No one's got it. Have you? Have you? Have you? Oh, let's ha get the words flowing. Yeah. Have I you told looked, them to get ready? Yeah. No. Have you? Yeah. Let's get the three work safe words uh, for next uh, episode in a fortnight's time. Are you going to be here? <laughs> <laughs> What's your yes. travel schedule like? Uh, I will be here. This will be January twenty sixth. I will be here. Okay. Yeah. I leave. I leave the I'll following day. I'll be here too. Day. I leave nice. the following day to go to Frankfurt. Or no, sorry, to Sydney. Sydney. Sydney, Sydney to Australia. Sydney, me. Mm -hmm. Where it was one hundred and fourteen Fahrenheit. Yes. So Wah. there's no good solution for how to, and it's so music you can work around, but stuff that is IOT devices or automation devices like Lutron light switches or uh, plugs. Well, so in that case, stuff, don't they just connect into this? I mean, the, the device will just know, Hey, turn off room well, one, right? Do I want, do I want my son to have the ability to go in and say, turn off lights in master bedroom nope. and turn off my lights? Nope. I do it to him to wake him up. It pisses him <laughs> off. <laughs> I don't want him to be able to do that to mine. So you can't share a device between Alexa skills <laughs> without having access to all of them. Wow. So, well, I guess that's kind of, it's, it's a flaw if you wanted to control it in that manner. Wow. That's, I, it's. Well, so it's essentially we're dealing with multi profiles IT, again. We're doing we're, we're doing user profiles again, well, aren't we? Well, you can you can switch profiles on Alexa. You can have multiple profiles that are there. Okay, but you can't um, with that. You can't uh, hook up even if you switch profiles. You can't hook up a different service skill. It simply changes other stuff on the Alexa side. So it's not fully integrated. Yeah. So like I I created a profile for my wife. Right. You can't create a profile for other members of your family if they're teens, because uh, Amazon has teen recognition right. now. Right. They don't show up as a full-fledged individual in your household for Alexa purposes. Hmm. Well, it's also a challenge on the Wink side too, right? Yeah, the Wink side has no no granularity whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. As your hub. Um. Well, I mean, it. I guess it's it's kind of the downside of of. Uh, I, I don't have a Google Home, but I know that Google Home does do voice training to recognize the difference between individuals. Yeah. But it's only available in certain areas, in certain countries, like U.S., obviously. Uh, but I don't think it has that level of control either. Where well, it, it, knows it at that least person. knows that, hey, it's Kelly talking. It's not Rick talking. Well, right. But does, but does it matter that it know. knows? Does it then restrict? No idea. Does, does it then restrict access to the device? Do we have uh, do we have our three words out of curiosity? I got the three words. Yep. Okay, we got we, the three words. We got like literally a less than a minute Jeep left. Magnavolt Jeep lasers. Mag what? Magnavolt Jeep lasers. We got that. I like that. I like that. Um, I we have a uh, AM um, signal from the band. Oh, nice. An AM signal. AM signal. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to, uh, the band to be playing, cue, we should cue the band. I think, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should cue the band cue the at band? this point. Okay. Yeah. Do we have the AM broadcast? It's been a we good chat. AM broadcast. Is that through Bluetooth? <laughs> it's sort no. It's, it's from the it's Canadian was, broadcast. Is it from company. the? Is it from the FM broadcaster? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we got something. 
So. Hope they can hear the music. Can yeah, you hear the music? Yeah, I, it's all right. You better start saying goodbye to people. All right. Then, uh, I don't have access to see who's in the in the what? room. Can you say goodbye? John to Marshall, people? Krista Coella, Dave, Patrick, Pierre Romain, Gareth Grudger, Mr. Sean Logan, Patrick Weinberger. Sorry, Patrick. Uh, Jared, you're there, of course. Tyler. Um, everybody like it's hard to say, man. Okay. Like, there's so many people here. Anthony's well, there too. He hasn't talked in a while. That, that, um, that does it for another exciting episode of the Patch and Switch program. We'll be back in a fortnight's time. There's Aubrey. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Until next week. Until next time. Have a weekend, everybody. <laughs> We're so professional. I know, eh? The quality on the show is just, it's going up. I hey, can look, feel my it. PC finally rebooted. Nice. Bye. <laughs>